I'm Peter, and I'm here today to talk to you about barbells. So we've got three main barbells that we carry at Fringe that have three main price points. We've got the Wonder Bar, which is coming in right around $200. We've got the Bomba Bar V2, which is coming in at around 250, and then we've got a nice little bump up to the Vaughn barbell. So why would you want to spend $200 versus 250 versus $400 on a bar? I'm gonna go over that a little bit. So, a couple of things when you start looking at bars. One of the first things to consider is the diameter of the barbell. And so that's what you're actually going to be grabbing on whenever you're doing your lifts. Historically, barbells have had diameters from anywhere from 25 millimeters for a female bar all the way up to 31 or 32 millimeters in diameter for a beater bar. Really, where everything's standardized though for the 20 kilogram or men's bars is right around 28 to 29 millimeters in shaft diameter these days. IWF standard for weightlifting is 28 millimeters. IPF for powerlifting is 28, 29 millimeters in there and most athletes are really not gonna wanna go thicker than 28.5 millimeters in shaft diameter. So what we do here is for the Wonder Bar, we've got a 28 millimeter shaft diameter. For the Bomba Bar V2, we've got a 28.5 millimeter shaft diameter, just kind of a hybrid bar in there for slow and fast lifts. And then of course the Vaughn Weightlifting Barbell is gonna be a true 28 millimeter IWF standard shaft diameter for those Olympic lifts. The other key thing to keep in mind when you're looking at barbells is the finish on the bars. Now there's a lot of debate over what is the best finish between bare steel, stainless steel, chrome, zinc, black zinc, manganese phosphate. We've played around with a lot of different finishes on our bars and right now what we're using is we're using either black zinc or manganese phosphate finish on the bars. There are a couple of reasons that we use those. Number one is for the feel that you get on the barbell. So a black zinc or manganese phosphate finish is gonna give you a real nice feel that's very close to the bare steel feel, but is also going to give you a lot of oxidation resistance, oxidation being rust. So if you have these bars in a warehouse or garage environment, you're going to have a high level of rust resistance, but you're also going to have a nice durable finish that's really going to feel good when you've got that bar in your hands. Moving on from the actual finish on the barbells, let's talk a little bit about Neural. Neural is K-N-U-R-L. It's the actual hash marks that are cut into the bars. Every bar that we sell at Fringe is going to be knurled all the way to the sleeves. So whether you're super tall and got a very wide snatch grip or whether you're normal tall like me and have a little bit uh, narrower of a snatch grip, you're gonna be able to have your hands on that knurl and you're not gonna have any slipping throughout the duration of the lift. The other thing to look at whenever you're looking at a bar is how deep, how grippy, or how aggressive the knurl is. Historically, power lifters really like a cheese grater, super deep knurl to that bar. However, these days, with the high reps that Olympic weightlifters and other people who are doing wads, they're really wanting more of a medium, soft, to even soft grip. Now, the nice thing with the manganese phosphate or a black zinc finish is that you can actually have a knurl on that bar that's not overly aggressive, but you're still going to have a really firm grip on that barbell. And so on all of our bars, we're going to split the difference between a relatively soft and a medium aggressive neural. So nothing that's overly aggressive. The other thing to look at is the hash marks on the bar. So IWF for weightlifting, IPF for powerlifting. On our Wonder Bar and our Bomba 2.0, we're going to be using dual neural marks. So you can line up to either neural mark, whether you're doing weightlifting, whether you're doing powerlifting, the slow lifts, or whether you're just wadding. On the Vaughn weightlifting barbell, which is of course a Olympic weightlifting barbell, we're gonna go with IWF neural marks. Now, a lot of powerlifting bars are going to have a center neural, 
we have tested a lot of center neurals and a lot of different types of neural on the bar, and we've gone ahead and done away with the center neural on all of our bars. The reason for that is if you're doing a lot of high reps with the clean, that center neural is really going to start eating into your collarbone there. And so we've eliminated it on our bars. However, with the finishes that we're using on our bars, the manganese phosphate or the black zinc, you're still going to have a nice level of grippiness on the back when you're doing a back squat, even if you're a standard crossfitter and ditch your shirt midway through the workout. I'm going to talk a little bit about steel. There's been a revolution in the type of steel used in barbells. So where old school barbells would tend to be thicker because they were made with a lower quality steel but still needed to be strong enough to stand up to the demands of powerlifting, bodybuilding, or even weightlifting, now we're using really high grade steel in all of our bars. So despite the fact that the bars are 28 or 28.5 millimeter in shaft diameter, we're going to be using anywhere from 180,000 PSI steel and up. What does this mean? Basically means it's going to take whatever you can throw at it. So from our least strong bar, the Wonder Bar at 180 PSI steel, give or take, it's still going to be able to take you know, 400, 500 pound squats and more going all the way up to the Vaughn bar, which is setting the mark at above 200,000 PSI in steel. Now, the other thing when you start getting into those really high PSI steels is you want to know what's the whip going to be on the bar. How much is the bar going to deform under load? Now, our Wonder Bar, which is our least expensive offering, has got a fairly stiff steel in it, so you're not going to get a ton of whip. Then you're going to go to the Bomba bar, which has got a little bit of whip, and then you're going to go to the Vaughn bar, which as a true weightlifting bar is going to have a, a lot of whip and a lot of deformation mid-lift. Finally, another thing that you're going to want to think about when you're looking at bars is the sleeve and the collar, and what does that spin look like? So even though the Wonder Bar is our low-end offering, we're building that overseas, and we're able to get some really nice needle bearings in there so you're going to get a great spin on the collar of these. Now, the Bomba Bar V2 and the Vaughn Bar are both bushing barbells, but they're going to have a really great spin, especially the Vaughn Bar. The Vaughn Bar has got the best spin that I've seen on any bushing ever. Now, the reason that spin is important is because whenever you're doing anything ground to shoulder, ground to overhead, or basically taking anything shoulder to overhead, you're going to want a little bit of nice, smooth rotation around those collars so that the weights are not just having to rotate on their own. So for example, if you've ever done any strongman work with an axle bar that has no rotation on the collars, you know that that second pull of the clean is an entirely different animal because you're not getting any rotation. Mm -hmm.